everyone! Welcome to another video, a creative art video with me, Tamara Laporte from My Living Arts. And today I have merged three things into one video. I am going to be working on the challenge mm -hmm. as a new series, a new series of mine, which is called Challenge Tam. And once in a while I put a challenge, um, or I ask my newsletter subscribers to vote for a new theme or topic that I'm going to try and work into a painting of mine, which is very fun, and I'm going to do that today. As well as I'm going to do that challenge in one of my journals, so I'm also working towards my Finisher Journal series. And I'm going to do a little bit of an unboxing, because I received an Upcrate box, which is a really fun... Look how cool, it's got a little key on the front here, see that? <laughs> Which is a little um, a fun subscription box for art supplies. So anyone who's an art supply junkie will know how fun it is because we can never have too many art supplies. No, no, no. So what you can do is you can subscribe to um, this box and then every month you get uh, some surprise art supplies. So I had already opened this before because I was so excited to see what was in there. But um, I've put exactly back into the box what um, what was in it. And I haven't used the supplies yet, so I'm going to be using the supplies today. Some of them also in this painting that I'll be doing, or the journal page that I'll be doing. So let's see what's in the up Upgrade uh, box. And if you're interested in joining uh, or buying these boxes, then you can. Um, there's a 15% uh, off link in my in the description below. Okay, so let's have a look. So, very cool. It's time for art. I agree. <laughs> it's a fun little box, and it's really exciting to see what's inside. Sorry, hold on. Okay. So uh, the way they tend to do it is they have some supplies loose in it, and also inside a little little package. So let's see, so I'm going to take that out, little package. And there's also a little card inside here where um, where they are sharing some artwork by another artist, which is kind of cool. Check it out. So you'll also get to be introduced to some other artists and I think sometimes they put a little um, booklet inside as well, like a little magazine. So that's very cool. So today I've been given three new uh, brushes, a little sponge. I absolutely love getting new brushes actually because I'm always on the lookout for new brushes. Um, I don't know what this brand is because I am unable to read. I'm guessing this is Japanese rather than Chinese. Yeah, it's just Japanese. So I'm unable to read Japanese. So I don't know who, uh, which br who these brushes are by. But I'm very excited about um, trying them out. So a little sponge, which is always great for creating texture. And then inside the little um, paper package, I have Ooh, uh, some cool items here. Check it out. So I was sent several paint tubes. These are acrylic gouache. I don't know if that just means gouache, because I've never really heard of acrylic gouache, or gouache, some people say gouache, I say gouache. Uh, so I'm intrigued to try these out, because I've never really worked, first of all, with this brand, nor have I worked with um, acrylic gouache, unless it just means gouache. <laughs> that might just be what it is. And then we get a little fun pipette, which is where you can pick up paint and drop some um, paint or ink around your page, which is cool. And then here is two pens. All right, let's have a look. So this is a pen by Pilot. It's called G-Tech C4. And ooh, I really like how thin it is. I'm always looking for really fine nibbed pens for my journaling. And this is very fine, which is very cool. What number is it? It's 0. It uh, doesn't say. But this is very exciting. I'd like to work with it because I like how, you know, how fine the nib is. Really, really tiny. And then this is a pencil by Pentel, and that's 0. 0.2. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that's also that's a me mechanical pencil. Oh, also very fine which is great. So I've been really wanting to work with really fine lines recently, so that comes in really handy. Um, I wonder what type of 
lead this is. I have a feeling it's either an HB or a B or something. Very cool. So what I'll do is I'll be using some of these uh, paints in uh, the artwork I'm going to be creating today in my journal that I'm trying to fill <laughs> with an unboxed art supply box. I love it when I can tick, you know what I mean? You can tick all the all the things, <laughs> all the things, tick them all. And I'll probably use, I won't be able to use all of the art supplies. Um, oh, this is by the same brand, is it? That Japanese brand again. Huh. But it says Turner here. I'm confused by that. Um, I like doing, trying to do some texture actually, so I don't really make do a lot of texture with like sponges or stamping, so that would be quite fun to try out. So, um, for those of you who follow the Finish a Journal series, if you don't follow it, you can browse my YouTube channel and have a look at the previous series. Last episode, I said I would choose one journal to fill, <laughs> and it's been a really, really hard a hard uh, choice to make, but I have chosen the one that is actually the emptiest. Um, and I'm gonna... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... I, I'm pretty sure that that's what I'm gonna do. So, for those of you who don't know, the challenge is I have said myself... Basically, I have loads and loads of journals and I never really fill, fill them to such an extent that I really am happy with all the pages. I just kind of leave unfinished sketches like this to sit in there. And I've challenged myself to finish a journal fully, however way I want to do it. So I have chosen one journal now, and I will be only working in this one for all these episodes. And I don't care how I do it, but I'm going to finish this one journal, not two or three. Or oh, four or five, because I have loads more. <laughs> so I have, uh, in this journal, just done a little sketch. Because the other thing uh, that we're going to work on is the challenge me challenge Tam challenge, and the challenge that uh, the 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 topics that I ask people to vote for. I'm going to show you that. Hold on, I'm going to put the where's the sketch? Here it is. So here's the sketch that I'm going to work on today. Look how sweet it is. Very sweet. So I'm if if those of you if some of you voted, you will probably know now what I have chosen to be the top, well not chosen, I've, I'm following the, um, <laughs> the, the, the favourite. So, the, the, the um, themes that the people could choose from were Hedgehog, ta -da! <laughs> Dreams, Banana. I'm surprised not more people cho didn't choose Banana. Come on. <laughs> it would have been really funny to, for me to try and do Banana. Sea Life and Fairy. Also would have expected people, yeah, Dreams was definitely close, but basically the winner is Hedgehog was the first, and then second runner-up is Sea Life, and then, can you say it? Yeah, Sea Life. And then we had Dreams, and then we had Fairy, and then only 2.8% of people wanted Banana. I am surprised. I would have done the Banana. <laughs> it's just for fun. <laughs> so, the Hedgehog, Hedgehog was the winner by 30%. And so I have been musing on what I was going to do. Was I going to just do a hedgehog on its own? Because I like doing, you know, my quirky animals on their own. And I thought, oh, it'd be nice to do a girl with an animal again. I haven't done that in a while. You know, m many of my artwork, my, sort of my older artwork, feature girls with an animal of some sort. So I thought today I would do, uh, yeah, a girl with an animal. And in particular, a hedgehog. That many of you who follow my my work since you know the beginning will know that um, characters the the the, an, the animal characters in in my paintings often represent um, compassionate friends, little characters, little mascots that support the the girl. The girl is always going through something hard. <laughs> Clearly representative of my own life, <laughs> and so these little characters are always there to help to help my main character. That usually is some sort of version of me, you know? So yeah, so here we are. I did this cool little sketch that I really like. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mostly working with um, some watercolours. My my uh, Schminke. My Schminke set. I've got some new colours, by the way. For those of you who are following the Schminke thing, sorry, who are also really into Schminke, I should be able to talk, but I haven't talked in a while. <laughs> I feel so isolated. I sometimes just look, stop, just forget how to talk. <laughs> I was going to tell you. So, uh, on my Facebook Live recently, I talked about how in this set that I bought, 
which is a schminka set, schminka set. And there's only a, a, it comes with a purple that I really don't like. It's like really, here, I'll show you on the original color scheme. It's this purple and it's sort of a purple. I really don't like it. So I was like, that's weird. Schminka surely has better purples. And uh, so I went looking on the Schminka, or well, on the website, and I found some new purples, really beautiful purples. Plus, not only a purple, I found an insanely awesome magenta. Woohoo! Check it out. And this here is a red violet, and that's a purple. These are all in the Schminka series. Actually, let me just fill them up. And I'm a really big fan of the magenta color. So there is, uh, in the previous series, I have the 352, which is sort of a magenta. But look, it's also, it's very close. It's because this is 367, you see. But this is, for me, more of a magenta than that. This is leaning more towards pink, rose, red. And this is a proper magenta. So, so happy to find it. So those of you who also love Schminka, uh, 940 is a beautiful red violet. 367 in the Schminka series is this beautiful, uh, I think it's called, Connect. I don't even know if they've got names. Do they have names? Yeah, they do. So yeah, this is the 940. It's also called Brilliant Red Violet. So I'm just going to put it in there. <clears throat> and I think that might be Conecridone or Magenta, I'm not sure. Absolutely incredible colors, these three. I really, really love them. I also bought this color, which is um, a more of a, it's a peachy color that I like to use to, as a skin tone starter. So that's another one that I like, I recommend. And these are all my, ah! These are all my little, um, all my, my tubed, my special tubed, um, here we go. Purple magenta, it's called, actually. So, this one is 367, it's called a purple magenta. It's beautiful, really, really, really beautiful. Gonna have to buy a big tube, I only bought a tiny tube. And then the purple purple, the 472, is... 474. You see, that's the 47. That's the 474, and I really don't like that one. But it's so close to the other one, and that's called 47. That's the 47. What did I say? Two, 472. Near. Ah, yeah. 472 is called Conecridon. Purple. That's Conecridone purple. So if that's my favorite. Well, that's more of a real purple. This is actually my favorite color out of the three. The well, sorry. I love the the, the magenta and and the but the red violet is truly stunning. And it's not a true true purple, right? But this is more of a true true purple. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to mention that for those of you who follow me and know about my Schminka obsession, I found some new colors. So, for this painting, I will be mostly working in a Schminka, um, a Schminka paint, brush, paint, sorry, paint, Schminka watercolor paint, and then um, I will also use some of these colors and see what they're like, what sort of paint is this. So if it's truly gouache, it's also sort of water soluble and will can react a little bit like, um, like watercolor, but if it's if it's more acrylics, you can also you can also dilute acrylics, of course. You can dilute the acrylics and make it really. Uh, let's have a look. So we'll, we'll cut these out. We'll make these come out just to see. I'm not sure if I, I'll you, put a tiny bit of all the colors in the palettes. Just just a tiny small amount. Ooh, okay, feels more acrylicy to be honest. Doesn't feel gouache. -y. This is an interesting color, Opera Red. I wonder if this is a um, fluorescent. Yep, looks like it. Fluorescent pink in the Opera, in the, no. So in that series, we have some white. Might as well bring out some white. This feels definitely like an acrylic rather than a gouache, but it looks, the name gouache is bigger on the pot, so <laughs> some red. And black, and we'll do some yellow. And just see, I'm just gonna incorporate them and see what sort of consistency they have and that sort of stuff. And then I'll also be using some of the brushes, the new brushes. They feel acrylic-y, they don't feel like watercolor brushes, they feel a bit more stiffer than that. Then again, you also have some watercolor, some watercolor brushes that are a bit stiffer, so I never quite know what if it doesn't say it explicitly on the, on the thing, I don't know. All right, so I'll be that's uh, that's I'll be what I'll be using. 
Uh, let's think what else. That's it, I think. So I hope you enjoy <laughs> watching me create this. And um, oh yeah, and I'll use some of that new pen, that pen as well. I want to really try out that pen. Okay, so I hope you enjoy um, watching this little video. And um, please, please share any share any um, artwork that you've done if you do any artwork in response to this maybe in the Willowing and Friends group on Facebook if you're there or on Instagram I'd love to see your work always enjoy seeing what people do in response to my videos and if you love this video please do remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you feel cool to do so I love connecting with people on social media and here on YouTube um, and yes definitely come and check out my social media if you can as well. I love hanging out on Instagram and lately also on TikTok. And if you are interested in taking any classes from me, I do in-depth classes on my website on www.willyone.org and the link is in the description, in the description below. Okay, thanks everyone and uh, I hope to see you around. Hello, I'm back. It's Boys Over Tam here, just um, chatting about the art piece that I'm making here. So, I've started using that brush from the Upgrade box, which I like. It's a nice, firm brush, and I'm currently using it with watercolor, and that works fine, even though it's a fairly firm brush. Now, I am someone who is not very Puritan about anything in life, really. A purist? Puritan? Purist. <laughs> about anything in life. So I'm not too bothered mixing up my acrylics brushes for my with my um, watercolour brushes. Sometimes watercolour brushes, I, I, I am careful that I don't get acrylics stuck in them, but you will see me use watercolour brushes for acrylics here and there. So I am not so, you know, purist about it. But some people are. Regardless, um, in this case, whatever this brush is for, I think it's more of an acrylics brush. I feel like acrylic, using acrylic brushes on with watercolor is less damaging than the other way around. Should you worry about that? But so anyway, so oh here, so um, so I've used the brush. I like the brush. It's fine with watercolor, and here I'm actually starting to use some of the acrylics paint now. I'm still confused that it's called gouache because it feels that it's like it's much more acrylics than gouache. Uh, it could be maybe it's a mix of some sort. So I'm going to have to look up what that means. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying the paint. It's uh, I'm mixing greens and yellows here. Later on, you'll see that I actually I'm doing a lot more to the to this shirt because it's going through a couple of iterations of different textures and colors. Um, but I started off with this kind of mix of yellow and blue, making it a greeny color, mixing it on the page as we go and. Um, I liked both those brushes. They were a nice kind of brush, I must say. Now here I'm actually going back to my other brush. So this is a watercolour brush that I usually use for my watercolour and I'm kind of just filling in the details of the face and some of the first bits of shading. Here I'm using the fine liner pen and I'm really happy with it. This kind of fine liner pens are better than the Bos Posca's for smaller work. So the the face and, and the little hedgehog are fairly small in this piece so using really fine lines for details works better than using even the most fine nipped of Posca's because that's still fine, quite a thick line it's an 0.7 I think and this is much more like an 0.2 so I'm really happy having a pen like that I'm really enjoying that now here I'm using um, some pencil for shading so I often bring in pencil for some shading I like mixing up all my I'm a mixed media artist so I like mixing up all of my supplies <laughs> as you all know so I've used so far I've actually used pencil Posca no not quite Posca pen but I also included um, a Tombow marker briefly and there was a oh yeah there was a an Artistro paint marker as well in there so I do like to mix up all my supplies as many of you know and I tend to do that just for whatever works in that moment. So um, I, I vary my supplies really by uh, in a very utilitarian way most of the time. Okay, so here I'm just kind of really now I'm building up sort of the shading. Um, this is not a very detailed because it's a small. I'm working quite small. I'm not doing super detailed shading. I'm doing some shading, but not like I might on a larger piece of art on a on a large piece of paper or on a canvas. So the shading is all sort of suggestive, but still is workable, it still works. This is a lovely blue that um, eventually fades, oh, I get, go, go over it with another blue, but 
I must just comment on this blue and I don't know which blue this is because <laughs> it's in a, a Schmincke set that Jane Davenport once gave to me years ago when I was on her retreat. I, I didn't make notes of the names of the colours. I love this blue, don't you think it's so beautiful? Um, but yeah, I do go over it later because actually as much as this blue is lovely, it doesn't fit with the colors, the final colour scheme. It's more of an indigo-y, green, turquoise-y colour scheme I end up with. So that blue is also going to become a little bit more turquoise-y later on. Um, the hedgehog is... I'm working a lot on kind of the, the hair area the, or the spike area, which is, has got lots of lights and darks in it. The hedgehogs tend to have the lights at the top of their... Sp is it spikes or spines? I don't know what you call those. Anyway, and here I'm starting to... I was adding... I'm going to keep just adding shading and dark, darkening, darkening areas and lightening areas where I feel like it. So I added some black to the hair. And here I'm working on the t-shirt again. Because, yeah, I wasn't that happy with the color. Well, this is quite nice. Maybe I should have kept it like that. <laughs> It's funny when I do for do whenever I do the voiceovers, I often think, "Oh no, I could have stopped at that part. Why did I do more?" But you know, that's how it goes, hey. All right, background. I started off with just some blues in the background, and then I feel like I wanted to add some mountains to the background. That's not really my thing usually, but I just called for it somehow. I wanted to give the whole thing a bit of a mystical feel, like she has this kind of special gaze in her eyes that look at the hedgehog, and the hedgehog seems to want to tell her something and it just felt a bit mystical for some reason so yeah the mountains also feel mystical um so yeah so and it, it kind of made a bit of a night sky one of the sort of a night sky feel i think the mountains came out okay i'm not i've never really done proper mountains it's, I'm, landscapes are not super my thing i do them here and there but um yeah they're not my regular topic of uh, they're not my regular muse let's just say that and here, so, but I, I thought the mountains eventually come out quite nicely looking. So I'm back with that brush again there, and I'm using the white from the tube, the acrylics uh, paint, and that's all fine. And I'm, I was adding a bit of spikes, white spikes, to the to the um, hedgehog there. Oh, and here I'm using the sponge to try and create some texture on the t-shirt. So I'm not that happy with the t-shirt top area, and I'm messing around with it a lot. So I, I was going through a couple of iterations, so I had that greeny color then made it slightly darker blue now I'm, I'm now i added the texture on there with the sponge and now i'm using blue and white from that the acrylics from the uh, upgrade box i like this light blue actually i, I partially again i wish i'd kept it like that <laughs> i keep going over it and thinking oh that was a nice and that was nice and actually all the iterations end up quite nice <laughs> that's another thing you know it's funny but it needed now, it was so two-dimensional, it needed more. And I wanted the, the top, as always, not to just be a top. I like adding little houses or other doodles and shapes to areas that have large segments of the same color, I suppose. So my little houses made an appearance there, and I'm working going to be working on them a lot more later on. And I'm starting to doodle a little bit with that fine, fine pen. Some hearts, some stars, some thinner line lines in the hair as well and just some adding some details in that's something i normally do with a posca pen but uh, it was nice trying out this very fine nibbed what was it um it wasn't pentel was it was it pentel i can't remember now pilot pilot brand the pilot brand oh and here i'm using actually a, a, a pastel pencil um by can't remember the brand now karen dash i think is it and they come in really handy. This is, again, for some shading. So this is like a chalky pencil. And uh, the story of those are that I, by accident, bought them thinking I bought color pencils. <laughs> uh, and I, they ended up being quite helpful to have over time. they got interesting little pencils. Because uh, I'm not a chalk. That's another thing. I'm not really, as much as I use a lot of mixed media, I don't tend to use chalky pastels much at all. But the pencils, chalky pencils, are quite nice for... Yeah, somehow, sometimes I really like them. Um, and so I'm a typical mixed media artist in that sense that I use a lot of different kinds of supplies in one in one sitting. So far I have used so much, like, and pencils and paints and acrylics and markers, different kinds of markers and the chalky pastel. You know, like, <laughs> it's just endless. But that's how I work, and I love working that way. It's really my ideal kind of way of working. 
because it's just in my case it's very utilitarian like I something I can't achieve with acrylics I might be able to achieve with the marker or something I can't achieve with watercolor I might be able to achieve with acrylics yeah so it's kind of more a sort of oh a problem fixing approach rather than a oh this is very logical that I'm now needing to use this kind of supply because you know there's no it's much more of a problem solving approach than anything else but really helpful so it's it's f good for people that like to have options and uh, want to have ways to solve problems I suppose you can also always pr solve problems particularly when you're working with acrylics you know acry acrylics on its own is very forgiving but I like having different also the other reason that's true with mixed media what I enjoy is that you get these different kinds of effects you know, so you're mixing up like uh, like the texture of a pencil versus the smoothness of acrylics it's really nice to have that contrast now for instance here because what you see me do here is I added um, Stabilo all pencil in and that became way too black for me as usual <laughs> that's what that pencil does and so then I muted that back down with some white and you get all these kind of interesting textures in her shirt and the shirt almost becomes like another dimension which is what I was hoping for but the original light blue, I think, was my favorite step, but it would have been too bland for me if I kept it just that. Now, in here, I'm trying to kind of add the turquoisey, bluey, indigo color that is in the background also into the shirt, so there was more integration. And almost like these two worlds were part and the same. Like somehow demonstrating the interconnectedness of everything, you know? And that's what I like about art, and in art journaling, you can do whatever you want. Uh, meaning you can create these magical worlds and and convey messages and stories through symbolism rather than realism. I really like that. Now and here you see me adding the this other color blue, which I don't now know if it was really needed, but I do enjoy that it has that similar kind of tint, tint of or tinge of more turquoisey color. And really, um, yeah. I don't do that much more to the background. I added, obviously, some stars. But the focus is the girl and the hedgehog and their connection. You can see how they gaze at each other. There's a real deep connection there. A real love, loving kind of connection between the hedgehog and the girl. And I really like it. So this is pretty much the finished, finished piece. Um, I don't work on it that much more afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed um, watching this little painting come together. And again, like I said before, please um, check out my artwork in other places. Hope you come and join me on Instagram. And do share with me if you make any artwork in response to this. Okay, much love. Thank you. Bye.